Hello, this is HT Fennec, and I have decided to re-upload my Masters of the Universe movie pitch, which I initially outlined in 2019. For years now, various production companies like Sony and Netflix have unsuccessfully tried to bring audiences a live-action version of He-Man. Originally a comic book series based on Conan the Barbarian, the 80s cartoon and the Mattel toys were what gave the franchise its notoriety. Despite enjoying them as a child, I do feel like the cartoons have aged badly and seem quite goofy when I look back retrospectively. The 2002 series, however, rejuvenated my passion for the Masters of the Universe, and I feel that this would be a great template for any movie maker to follow. More recently, Kevin Smith gave us Revelation, which was met with mixed reviews. Therefore, with all this in mind, what would I like to see in a future Master of the Universe film? Firstly, I must clarify that the He-Man story is extremely convoluted, with a variety of timelines, interpretations, alternate versions, and reimaginings. Some of the stories come from the comics, whilst others originate from the toys and cartoons. Now my idea would be to blend multiple alternate He-Man stories into one. However, this would not be a one-and-done project like the Dolph Lundgren movie, but a whole new series of films. Just like the Lord of the Rings series, which had three films and three prequels in The Hobbit, I would aim for something similar with the Masters of the Universe movies. The story would begin with three films before He-Man's era, depicting the story of his ancestor King Greyskull hundreds or even thousands of years ago. These films would include the name Greyskull in the title to distinguish the series. We would begin with King Greyskull, followed by Greyskull, the quest for the sword, and finally, the death of Greyskull. These films would have a similar style to the 1982 Conan the Barbarian movie, which actually inspired the He-Man character. I also think the colour palette of the movie 300 would suit this movie. We would blend action, fantasy and horror to portray violent and barbaric times fought with swords and sorcery. In the first film titled King Greyskull, we would be introduced to our protagonist Devan, a gigantic barbarian warrior from an Eternian tribe. When his brother is devoured by the Snake Men, he leaves his people to defend Eternia from the tyranny of King Hiss, who seeks to control Castle Greyskull. He saves the sorceress, who rewards him with the treasure she was guarding, weapons and equipment needed to defend the castle. Devan becomes a rebel leader, and his bravery attracts support from all over Eternia. It is here that he meets his love interest Vina. Devan is eventually gifted a Liger by the Green Tiger tribe as he prepares for his climatic battle against the Snake Men at Castle Greyskull. Despite losing his axe, Devan is victorious in battle and is crowned King Greyskull, ruling Eternia with his new bride, Queen Vina, and their council of elders to advise them. In the sequel, titled Greyskull Quest for the Sword, King Greyskull requires a new weapon to replace his lost battle axe in the form of a legendary sword. He goes on a quest to find the Sword of He, where he must display acts of courage, wisdom, kindness and strength to prove himself worthy of wielding the weapon. It is told that this formidable sword was forged within the fires of Starseed, deep inside Castle Greyskull. During the journey, King Greyskull must pass the maze-like corridors of Lithos, survive the dreaded Valley of Dragons, navigate the Labyrinth of Thor, cross the entire Sands of Time, and climb to the peak of Mount Imperium, where he finally finds the Sword of He within a cave. It is within this cave that he is given the Sword of He by the most powerful wizard in the universe, Hero, who deems him worthy enough to take possession of the weapon. As well as finding the powerful Sword of He, the journey acts as a path of self-discovery, where King Greyskull realises that the power was always within him. He has the power. <laughs> In the 
In the third movie named The Death of Greyskull, we have All Out War, where the eponymous character defends his castle against the evil Horde army. King Greyskull summons the power within him to destroy Hordak's body, however is also dealt a fatal blow himself. Before succumbing to his injuries, Greyskull uses his sword to imprison the Horde within Despondos, which scars the land around Castle Greyskull. In his final act, Greyskull infuses his spirit within the sword and gifts his powers to his garrison so that they can rule Eternia with wisdom and kindness. He states that if a new hero is needed, a champion from his bloodline will emerge. This sets up the next trio of films with the story of He-Man. Since the next three movies are further into the future, they would move away from the Conan style and adopt a more Lord of the Rings slash Star Wars feel. Therefore, it would borrow from the characters and landscape of Lord of the Rings, but the vehicles and technology of Star Wars. Now I must confess that this was initially an idea that I heard from Christian Harloff on Collider Live, which is another YouTube channel that I highly recommend. Therefore, I claim no ownership of the Star Wars Lord of the Rings idea, I just strongly agree with it. I think that the film could also borrow from the colourful retro 80s visual style of Thor Ragnarok. Not the comedy, just the look of the film. Now with all that said, the fourth film in the series and the first of the He-Man sagas would be aptly titled He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. This would act as He-Man and Prince Adam's origin story, as well as introduce Skeletor, who plunges Eternia into darkness after centuries of peace following King Greyskull's death. After yet another attack on the royal palace during Adam's 16th birthday celebration, Man-at-Arms takes Adam to Castle Greyskull, where the sorceress has a gift for him. Prince Adam is given his ancestor King Greyskull's power sword on his birthday, and becomes the most powerful man in the universe. He-Man and man arms journey across Eternia to locate and form a team of powerful warriors in their looming battle with the evil forces of Skeletor. Finally, the Masters of the Universe are formed and swear to protect Eternia as the journey towards Snake Mountain begins, where an epic battle ensues. In the fifth movie, called He-Man The Two Swords, the sorceress reveals that there are two power swords and He-Man only has one. It is prophesied that he who has two swords can unlock the full power of Castle Greyskull. He-Man and the Masters must now stop Skeletor from obtaining the second sword at all costs, which is located at the top of Eternia's highest mountain. Despite the Master's best efforts, Skeletor is successful in obtaining the other sword and prepares an attack on Greyskull. <laughs> in the sixth film, entitled He-Man The Battle for Castle Greyskull, focuses on the final encounter between He-Man and the Masters of the Universe against Skeletor's evil forces. The conflict takes place at Castle Greyskull, with the Masters taking possession of both swords and emerging victorious. Ultimately, peace is returned to Eternia. So, with my six film series outlined, there still remains one burning question. Who would play He-Man? I feel that this is the quintessential ingredient that could make or break this film and certainly do not agree with some of Sony's rumoured choices. In my opinion, this character needs to be played by someone who has the physical presence to be believable as He-Man. It cannot be some pretty male actor who goes on a weight training program for a year to prepare for the role. This character was based upon Arnold Schwarzenegger's Conan, who was a product of 80s hyper-masculinity, where bodybuilding was popularised by Hollywood. As a result, we would need to look towards today's equivalent, and for me, this would need to be a classic bodybuilder from the modern era, like Callum Von Moga or Chris Bumstead. They clearly have the muscularity and physical proportions for such a role, and Moga even played the actor that was the inspiration for He-Man in the 2018 movie Bigger. Therefore, Von Moga clearly looks right for the part, although opinion is divided on his acting ability as his portrayal of Schwarzenegger was questionable. 
However, I must state that doing an Arnie impersonation is far more difficult than what people think. Everyone believes that they can do it, but very few people actually can. For the record, the best Schwarzenegger impressionist I have ever heard is Joe Gordette. So I think a classic style of bodybuilder with some acting skills should be able to portray He-Man. But in all honesty, how well do you need to be able to act to portray a muscle-bound warrior from another world? What we would need to do is surround the actor in the leading role with a host of more established and experienced actors in other parts. In regards to the villains, they would all be depicted as horrific monsters to give the film its horror element. To elucidate my point, there have been some concept designs that I have seen on the internet which would work perfectly. Therefore, I feel that the film would need a 12A rating at minimum, but preferably a 15. In order to maximise the chance of box office success, you could start the series off with the three He-Man films first to gauge their popularity before investing in the Greyskull movies, just like Lord of the Rings did with The Hobbit. Admittedly, I have cherry-picked alternate Masters of the Universe stories and have tried to blend them into a singular narrative that makes sense. So now you know what I'd like to see in the next live-action He-Man movie. Do you agree with these ideas, or would you like to see something entirely different? Please let me know in the comment section, and until next time, do take care.